Hello fellow travelers, this is the first episode of in-depth boss guide series where we'll take a closer look at Tevat's major threats. I'm too lazy to be awesome, but today I'll tell you how to deal with Beth, the animal hypostasis, also known as Animal Cube. First thing to note when you fight a hypostasis enemy is that you can only deal damage to its core, which is normally protected. The core will become exposed during or after certain attacks but it doesn't mean that you can't use the time in between. Attacking the boss while the core is protected still counts as attacking an enemy, so you can use it to gain energy, trigger on hit effects, stack buffs, or apply debuffs to prepare for the next opening. Another thing to mention is that the core is a pure animal element, which makes it immune to animal damage, but instead it constantly triggers swirl reactions with a short cooldown when it contacts with Pyro, Hydro, Cryo or Electro. Since Swirl deals damage with the element you combine with Animal, it simply causes the boss to take additional instance of damage. Since Animal Cube deals Animal damage, fighting it during the rain will cause you to take additional damage because of the constant wet status on your characters. Additional damage is fixed and is triggered on every hit you take. In my case, it's always 721 damage. But with that, attacking the core with Pyro will trigger Vaporize reaction in addition to Swirl, multiplying your attack damage. Also, when it rains, Crystallize can be triggered creating a Hydra Shard. Other Hydra-related reactions will have no effect on the boss. So overall, you can benefit from fighting Anima Cube in the rain, but I would suggest to avoid it if you are not comfortable with the fight yet. In the end, it's up to you to decide. With that being said, let's take a closer look at what Animal Hypostasis can throw at you. During the fight, Animal Cube will repeat several types of attacks until one of you wins. First of them is Vacuum. Boss creates a strong pulling field for a few seconds, which also continuously deals damage, then explodes, dealing heavy damage and knocking you back. If you got stuck inside the field, it's impossible to escape, so if you want to avoid damage, move away in advance. The core will be exposed during the pulling, so you can either use ranged characters to deal damage from a safe distance, or go inside the field to attack the core with melee characters. If you decide to do the latter, keep in mind that with dash you can avoid knockback from a final explosion, but you can't avoid damage. To avoid damage as well, you can use elemental burst cast animation iframes or lift your characters high enough. After explosion, core will stay exposed and you will be able to deal more damage. Second attack is Crystal Fly. It's a two-hit combo attack where the first attack creates an updraft that will launch your character up in the air and second attack hits in a straight line. The easiest way to avoid both is to dash out of the first attack towards the boss. The second attack can't target you if you stand under the boss. This also helps you with being able to attack the core as soon as it lands. You can also damage the core with ranged characters while it's still in the air. It's easier to perform with catalyst wielding characters because the boss moves quickly and some of the arrows might miss. Third possible attack is Meteors. Anima Cube will attempt to hit you with three meteors, and they kinda trying to predict your movement, but honestly, Boss is not particularly great at it. After falling, meteors will create updrafts, which can lift your characters up in the air and might be useful to deal with some other mechanics. The core will be exposed only for a few seconds during the cast, so it's better to attack it, saving some energy to dodge meteors if you have to. Although, most of the time, they won't even be a problem. Fourth attack is Clap. As the name says, it's just a quick clap. There's really not much to say about it. The best way to deal with it is to use dashing iframes. Simply don't panic and delay your dash. But if you don't feel confident enough to do so, you can also just dash away to get out of range. After that, you will be able to damage the core. Fifth attack is Missiles. Boss will hang in the air and launch three projectiles at you. During this attack, the core is exposed, so you can deal damage with ranged characters. You can either strafe in aiming mode and keep shooting, or stay close and attack the core with normal attacks, using dashes to avoid projectiles. The core will fall down and stay exposed after the last missile as well, so you will still have your chance to hit it if you prefer using melee characters. Those attacks have no predetermined order and will happen at random throughout the fight. 
The only scripted attack is tornadoes, which always happens after 3 or 4 attacks from the beginning of a fight. Boss will teleport in the center of arena and will create 8 roaming tornadoes. You can try your luck dodging them near the boss, but since tornadoes don't go far from the arena, you can wait outside and run closer when they disappear or just before that to attack the core. The core will stay exposed for a long time after this attack, so it's your best chance to deal a lot of damage to it. Each tornado leaves an orb of energy. After several attacks, boss will pull 3 orbs, releasing a shockwave per each orb consumed. You can prevent this from happening by collecting the orbs yourself. If there is not enough orbs on the field, boss will cast tornadoes again instead. Cube itself will help you collect those orbs. Every tornado cast or orb pulling will be followed by meteors. Updrafts they create can be used to collect the orbs. You can also use climbable constructs or abilities that can get your characters up in the air to reach the orbs instead. Keep in mind that boss will still keep attacking you. And to be honest, this way might be intended, but the much better way is to completely ignore all of that. Firstly, because after the tornado cast ends, core will be exposed for a long time, so this will be the best time to spend your resources and deal as much damage as you can. And secondly, because you can deal even more damage fighting it instead of collecting orbs. Anima Hypostasis doesn't benefit at all from collecting the orbs, and even though you can't hide from shockwaves, you can avoid them easily by standing far enough, above the ground floating or climbing a construct, or even below the arena level. All of that makes collecting orbs quite unnecessary. After you drop Animal Hypostasis down to critically low HP, it will enter the revival phase called Second Wind. It will create 4 orbs alongside with 4 updrafts for you to collect them. You have about 15 seconds to do so. After that, boss will revive restoring HP depending on the number of orbs left. If you didn't manage to collect all 4 orbs, this phase repeats with the number of orbs you left last time. Once you've collected them all, the boss will respawn for the last time, restoring just a tiny amount of HP and you will be able to kill it for good. Now when we have an understanding of what the Anima Cube can do, it's time to think about what we can bring for the fight to make it easier. Let's go through some general moments to summarize how characters perform when they are fighting Anima Cube. When it comes to elements, it's better to avoid Animo characters since boss is immune to Animo damage. Although you can make use of their abilities sometimes, it's much better to pick Pyro, Hydro, Cryo or Electro characters for free bonus damage from Swirl reactions. Geo characters can't trigger Swirl, which makes their damage output unaffected and most likely they will have no chance to trigger Crystallize as well, since you can't trigger it with Animo so they lose some of their potential, but you still can use them if you like. As for characters who rely mostly on physical damage, it's impossible or at least really hard to trigger super contact, because all of the elements will be cleared from the boss right after you apply them, so you can't boost their damage, but again, you can bring them if you want to. Now what about the weapon choice? Including ranged characters in your team will allow you to deal damage from a safe distance and avoid taking damage during vacuum cast, as well as make use of exposed cores during missiles or crystal fly attacks. Mages will have more benefits here in my opinion, since their normal attacks deal elemental damage, which can be boosted with swirl, and have no actual projectile that can miss. Melee characters on the other hand have neither real benefits nor downsides here. There is no extremely favored characters for the fight, but since you can only deal damage to the core within short amount of time when it becomes exposed, it's better to rely on characters with high burst damage capabilities. And if you rely on melee characters, you might want to bring some healing or shielding to not be afraid of being greedy during vacuum cast and speed up the process. With that in mind, you can now make your perfect team to fight Animo Cube according to the characters you have or like. That leaves just one more thing I want to talk about. There are three achievements related to Anima Hypostasis that you can earn. For the easiest one, you just have to collect all four orbs during a single revival phase and defeat the boss. This achievement works in co-op mode, so if you have problems collecting all four orbs at once, you can invite some friends for help. 
Second achievement is also about collecting orbs, but for this one you have to collect 10 orbs in total throughout a single fight. 4 orbs you have to collect during revival phase also counts, so you have to collect at least 6 more orbs generated by tornadoes. It's ok to do so in several tornadoes casts as long as you do this in a single fight. Fun fact, orbs float up and down a little bit, so you can collect lower orbs by simply jumping with tall characters at the right timing. You will get the achievement as soon as you collect the last required orb, without killing the boss. As with the previous one, you don't have to be the one collecting orbs. Orbs collected by your teammates are also counted towards your achievement progress, so feel free to invite someone to speed things up. The last one is probably the most problematic. During Tornado's cast, you can infuse Tornado's with Pyro, Hydro, Cryo or Electro. To get the last achievement, you have to infuse them with at least one of each, then kill the boss. For a tornado to become infused, it has to come into contact with one of the aforementioned elements. You can't target the tornadoes themselves. Moreover, if you try to use attacks or targeted skills near the boss, it will become the target and you will most likely miss. This makes attacking tornadoes tricky, but there are several ways you can do this. First is to use Archer's charged attacks. Charged attacks get elemental infusion, so if you shoot a tornado, it will become infused. It might be a bit hard since there is no way to predict tornado's movement and taking damage in aiming mode resets your charging progress, but with a little bit of luck, you should be ok. Second way is to use AoE skills. The bigger the AoE, the better. Since you can't target tornadoes, just use skills that deal elemental damage in the area instead. Hitting a tornado might be a little luck dependent again, but since you don't have to do this in a single phase, you should be fine eventually. The only luck independent way is to use abilities such as Kaya's Burst or Barbara's Skill which affect everyone around your character and go hug a tornado. You can also use alternate sprint abilities for the same effect, since they apply their corresponding element when you end the sprint and character reappears. And of course, this achievement works perfectly in co-op as well, so don't hesitate to help out your friends. Keeping track of your progress should be easy, since not only tornadoes change after the infusion, but they also leave an orb of element they got infused with. If you haven't done all 4 infusions in one cast, just pick up the orbs or trigger the revival phase to force the cube to cast tornadoes sooner and give it another go. To get the achievement, you only have to infuse tornadoes. It doesn't matter if Anima Cube collects infused orbs or not, simply defeat it after you are done with tornadoes and you'll get it. That's all I have for you this time fellow travelers, thanks so much for watching, I hope you'll have a nice day and I'll see you in the next one.